today's anticipated high, 103 degrees. Oh. Of course, those of you who edify yourselves with the AM television news are aware of the picture. The most beautiful picture this crusted desk sergeant has had the pleasure of viewing from a weather satellite, Cumulus Clouds. Oh. Yeah. Cold Canadian Cumulus Clouds. Fluffy white billows of angel hair, pregnant with moisture, due to arrive this late p.m. Be advised, there is a cautionary addendum. Said clouds have the possibility of passing in the night like felons, oh. not giving as much as a day's shade. Item 11, and I want you all to look for the moral in this. It seems our space cadet, Mr. Smith of Jefferson Avenue, has been found here on Earth. A uh, transferal form, half of which was incorrectly filled out, half of which was left blank, caused the suspect to be placed erroneously on a bus for the Hutchison White Collar lockup in the country. <laughs> Mr. Smith's unlawful incarceration was discovered only after he signed up for the bridge tournament. <laughs> <laughs> the story may very well have had a different ending had the suspect been instead the triple murderer put away by this precinct last month. Yeah. The homily goes, the job isn't over until the paperwork's done. <laughs> and you all had better start living with it. Or else you'll find yourself being replaced by student officers within whom I am imbuing the necessity of bureaucratic detail. And with that, I conclude the items on this morning's agenda. But I would please like you to hold your seats for a few personal notes. Lieutenant Hunter was admitted to Mercy Hospital yesterday afternoon. The exact nature of the malady is unknown to this podium. But even as we speak, Lieutenant Hunter is on the operating table. The front desk is closely monitoring the situation and will keep the squad room informed as news develops. In the meantime, let's send the Lieutenant all our prayers and best wishes for a speedy recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Right. On a more celebratory note, the birthday wagon is amongst us today. Officer Andrew Renko. Officer Renko's sister, I acquired certain historical information of that glad occasion of so many years ago. Time of birth, 4.04 a.m. Weight, 10 pounds, one ounce. Distinguishing characteristics, enormous feet. Homeward <laughs> <laughs> mother the following day. Uh, happy birthday, Andy. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right, that's it. Let's roll. And hey, hey, hey. Let's be careful out there. <laughs> Mark, uh, time is 35 and tall. All right, Rico, I'm taking you to lunch today at the Cafe Bordeaux. So it's going to be a surprise, but it uh, sounds like you might get yourself in before noon. What do you mean by lunch? Lunch, food, eat. This is going to be a surprise party. I cannot take it, not on this day. Congratulations. Happy birthday, cowboy. You know, this is rapidly becoming a situation of public amusement, and I am not amused. I only hope that people treat me as nice as they treat you when I'm your age, sweetheart. My age. Hey, Rico, I got you this. A pictorial history of the Super Bowl. 94 pictures, 10 in color. I should sit down right on his birthday. Well, at least there's one person in this group that understands the nature of a personal gift. Thank you, Leo. Hey, birthday boy, don't forget, the job ain't over till the paperwork's done.
Christmas Drive, on 24th Street. side of this thing. It's not so black and white. Coley and Lyle, a couple of choir boys, for God's sake. It must be 120 degrees in here, Neil. What do you say? Hey, cool it, eh? Uh, about this Bahamas thing, you going or what? Hey, J.D., man, I told you when I know about it, you okay, know about okay, it. Okay, okay. Coolie's out. Situation. You have an address? An approximate address. I want her in here right away. Officer uh, Robert Hill, where can I find him, please? Uh, third desk against the wall. Here you go, Captain. Thank you. Can I help you Officer Hill. Sounds in the dead wild. You look like a man that likes baseball. I do? I've had a uh, season box for about eight years, third base line. I've got city business tonight and uh, such an important game. It'd be a shame to waste them. You and a lady friend? I'm sorry, I can't accept it. 
Officer Hill, I, uh, I appreciate character, but I also applaud spunk when I see it. And I want to tell you that I approve 100% of the way you handled our little misunderstanding the other day. So I thought we could settle it like a couple of old allies. Case closed. You're a good cop, Robert. You know you're on the best force in the country. It's people like you that keep us voting those high appropriations. Thank you. So take the tickets. Just my way of saying keep up the good work. I finally got this thing to work. It, it was a battery. Let's go. I thought because it was made by them Japanese people that it wouldn't work. But, but the reason it didn't work yeah, was because it didn't have a battery. Mac. This for the drug buy? Yes, sir. Run it down for me. We meet this afternoon. Uh, do a little flexing. No action at the meet? Oh, there shouldn't be. Uh, I'll show him the money. He'll tell me he doesn't have the stuff. I'll handle for a little bit. We'll set it up for tonight. Take to now with you. Captain, you're making me nuts. I'm just passing on an order from the chief. You know, you sort of have to admire him. Juicing up Daniels like that, showing up at 5.30. A.M.? That's what the night man told Leo. Yes, sir. night. And I get, sometimes I get wound up. And I mean to say one thing and it comes out like something else. I was just trying to say how grateful I was. Okay, I got something for you. Street market. It's very thoughtful. This ought to do it. Just sign right here. This is a game, you know, between me and the insurance companies. That's all. Nobody stops the criminals. I just keep paying higher premiums for the privilege of getting robbed every three months. Lucky for you, you're only down a couple of VCRs. Maybe you'll get lucky and catch the guys that did this. What, do you think we like it like this? He waved like this? Your cops home sick, out on vacation, tied up in court? We're doing good to get six units out on the street. And the winter's too cold. Rainy season is too wet. All I know is the crooks are too dumb to pay any attention to the weather. Well done here, Washington. Sure. If I were you, I'd get that door fixed right away. Yeah, there's a locksmith across the street. I'm uh, putting his kid through Harvard. Lyle and I rode together for a month when we were rookies. You know, one time I saw him go through two dumpsters and a grease rack to get to a cat burglar. Can you beat it? Can you beat that?
calling in line. La Rue and Washington are still on it. Diane Coslow? Fifteen years old, maybe. We found her working on 133rd Street and Decker. Good work, Joe. Ray, let's see if we can find out if George Davenport is still in conference with her arsonist. I'll be there in a minute. All right. Captain, any word on Lieutenant Hunter? Well, he's out of surgery, but we won't have a report on the biopsy for a couple of hours. Thank you. can't make you stay here if you want to leave, Diane. Nor can they force you to answer any questions you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. And I'll be here if you're unsure about anything. All right? Okay. You know Henry Goldblum? Yeah. I guess, sorta. There are stories coming out of the Jefferson Heights police precinct that you know I'm a lot better than just sorta. Hey, look. I don't have to be here. She said so. So why don't you just leave me alone? Henry resigned yesterday after 10 years in this police force. The reason he resigned was these rumors that he'd been sleeping with you. It's not too late to save his career, but only you can do that. Well, what about my case? Can you help me with my case? Diane, Captain Farilla's position is that he can't offer you any deals because he doesn't want to encourage you to tell anything but the truth. You know, I get people wanting freebies all day. I think Ms. Coslow doesn't wish to speak any longer. Diane Henry helped you. He listened to you. He fed you and sheltered you and did everything he could to get you into the best program in the city. You gonna abandon him now? You gonna treat him the same way your parents treated you? Is that how you pay back one of the few people who have ever been kind to you? Don't abandon him. At least give him the same consideration he gave you. Did you sleep with him? Did you? Then when you were picked up the second time in Jefferson Heights, why did you tell the detectives you did? Because I spent the whole night in jail. He should have come down and gotten me if he was my friend. He wouldn't even talk to me. It would mean a lot if you'd give a statement. It's really nice to me. I just slept on the couch. He didn't touch me once. Ray, Miss Coslow will give us a statement now. I haven't gotten through to Henry yet. All right, just keep trying. Rachel's his apartment everywhere. Well, whip my wire, I cannot believe this. Two playoff tickets for tonight right behind That's the right. dugout. I cannot believe this. This must have set you back 60 bucks, partner. A mere flesh wound, my man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. We're going to have a ball. But I can't go. You can't go. Oh, I have a day tonight. You look at this. 35 going on 50 in a one-way job in a roach hole apartment going up to 500 bills next month and a checking account on the disabled list and I can't even get my partner to be my dear. You know, you're not birthday. getting older. You're getting downright maudlin. Woman is looking at you again. What are you talking about? She's not looking at me. She is. She is not. She's probably just waiting for something. Now be quiet. You know what your problem is, Renko? 
bad attitude. If you lost a little weight... Don't talk to me about my weight, Joe. And got some decent clothes, you'd have to fight the ladies off with a nightstick. Excuse me, Officer Hill? Yeah. Well, we have a phone call for you at the front desk. I left this number with the dispatcher. Ah, thanks. Excuse me, officer. What? I'd like to report a misdemeanor. You mean to me? Aside from your partner, I don't see any other uniforms in here. Well, I guess you're right, ma'am. Uh, what is the nature of the complaint? How about breach of contract, for starters? My lunch date's a no-show. Well, I'd call that a major felony, ma'am. Except judging by appearances, I'd say that your suspect has an excellent chance of acquittal due to temporary insanity. San Segula, Muscado, Saint Epoxy, Perer, uh, Lichnay, uh, anything you say, Francois, as long as it doesn't have a screw on cap. Don't let the backwoods charm fool you, ma'am. He's really a very boring person. Cheryl, I'd like you to meet my lesser half. Bobby Hill, this is Cheryl. Bradford. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Seems the lesser half sister got her car impounded, so maybe we should drive down to South Street and check on the situation. Well, why don't you drive down to South Street and check on the situation? I'll just cab it back to the station after I finish my little tete a tete with Cheryl here. Suit yourself, man. Well, here we are. Here we are. You, uh, you sure you don't want to have something to eat or something? No, thank you. Officer Renko, uh, do you think it would be terribly forward of me to tell you how attracted I am to you? Well, ma'am, uh... It's free country, isn't it? guys doing here? Just get him up, huh? Don't make this any tougher than it has to be. Hey, what tougher? What the hell are you guys talking about? You're under arrest, my man. Grand larceny. Hey, come, come on. on. Wait a minute. We were just it's taking it down the station for Prince. It's a stereo shop heist. I mean, we couldn't carry it around in the unit all day. We were just dropping it here to the end of the shift. Save it, man. Will you just save it, huh? J.D., I'm 34 years old, man. You're talking about my life here. I got a family, man. I got a father who thinks I'm some kind of neighborhood hero. Oh, man, this is gonna kill him. Come on, J.D. Oh, come on, J.D., please, man. No cuffs. Come on, now I'm taking it. Turn around and shut up. Cheryl, I swear you have rotated my day 580 degrees. And I'll tell you something, lady, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. First time for everybody. Yeah. And what I'm dying to know is, I mean, c can I see you again? Sure. When? We'll run into one another again sometime. No, no, I mean it. We had a wonderful time together. 
Maybe we should leave it at that. Leave it at what? I mean, are you in the habit of bed now with somebody and then never see him again? Really, I gotta go. I got a dentist to oh, three. Come on now. Come on. Happy birthday. Wait a minute, Dom. How'd you know it, it was my birthday? Well, you told me at the restaurant. No, I didn't. I definitely did not. Now, wait a minute. Now, what's going on here? Now, just talk to me, Cheryl. What is going on here is that we had a terrific time. And you're an attractive, charming man. And a wonderful lover. Don't lie to me, Cheryl. Just don't do that. Just tell me how you knew it was my birthday. Because I was your present. I do this for a living, Andy. But that's got nothing to do with how much I've enjoyed these last couple of hours. Oh, what a sweet man I think you are. You are a hooker. I arrest people like you. All right. All right, what do you want? Huh? You want ten dollars, twenty dollars, forty dollars? Why don't we make it an even hundred and just put ten bucks in for the charade? Or do you give a special professional discount for Cox birthdays? Here, take this. Your friends already took care of that, Andy. Get out. Start from the alley shots. We've got a good five minutes of tape from the wire we planned on the store's owner. Webster and Charles are running serial numbers on the stuff we hauled out of the garage. Looks to be twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth. Store owner cooperated in this? Yes. I'd say we've got these babies cold. I've seen those. There's nothing to say. You'll be booked here, then move downtown for statements. You'll be kept in special lockup overnight and make bail if you can in the morning. As of now, you're suspended from all police duties. That's all. Captain. Please don't book us here. Take us down to Midtown or anywhere. Don't book us in our own station. I don't think I could stand the sight of it either. Can you take them? Here, Midtown doesn't make any difference with the department. Just leave your badges. your love life ten hours out of every work don't day. Don't you think I don't know who else is in on this? In on what? He didn't like his in birthday present. We thought it would make you day. It made my day all right. It well, made it downright miserable. Will you stay out of this, Lucille? I don't believe you, Rico. Look, why can't you just accept it in birthday. the spirit that it was given? I accept it in the spirit in which it was given. Will you keep your mouth down, please? A spirit of malice, Moral bankruptcy and a total lack of you. What are you yelling at me for? I, I do not believe you guys. 
Frank! Frank! Chief Daniel Salt is called. He wants to see you. Bayside Athletic Club at 5.30. I've been waiting for this. I'll be with Howard until then. You found Henry? He hasn't been on his farm in all day. We're still trying. Well, try Rachel's. His folks. Friends in the department. Use your imagination, but get him here. All right. What's your most favorite role? Uh, that question stinks, doesn't it? Listen, what I really want to know is... Well, and what's John Gennaro really like? Once in the papers, I saw a picture of a guy who shot five people in a bar. I went to a mirror, and I didn't leave it until I had that same look in my eyes. See, the thing was, I mean, I could see the bar. I could see the bullets hitting the wall. I could hear the barmaid screaming. See, it was all there in that look. And that's John Gennaro. Don't you ever scare yourself? It's just acting, Faye. Come on, motor mouth. How are you, Mrs. Ferrello? Hi, Mick. Uh, thank you, Faye. extra baggage. That's my maiden aunt. I got 10,000 here. You got the stuff? Sorry, fellas, but there ain't no stuff. Maybe next time. What are you talking about, Woodley? Profit motive, my man. I got offered a better price about an hour ago. We got an arrangement, hairbag. I got orders to fill. Now, let's not get pushy, cousin. Given the circumstances, I didn't even have to show up for the meat. It's just my way of being caught. Woodley, you're gonna blow this over chump change. What's the matter with you? My people can move ten times this weight on a weekly basis. Well, maybe we'll do business some other time. How much? How much more they offered? One G on top of the ten. Now there's 500 worth of good faith. And there's 10 more of these on delivery. Now that's one and a half on top of 10. And I don't even know what's missing. I'll call you later where we're gonna meet. Oh, we'll be here, my man. But look, before you go, I tell you, you just better dig yourself. You jack us around one more time. And I'm personally gonna chop off your right arm and have it for lunch. Man, you got some ugly relations. <laughs> I thought the deal was going south you on thought? it. You're not supposed to think. Okay. You're not even supposed to be here. All right, I'm sorry, okay? I am.
And what do I get instead of his badge? A statement from a 15-year-old prostitute. I won't get rid of an innocent man. Innocent! Alleged boffing aside, Frank, you know how many department regulations you break when you take a runaway home with you instead of arresting her? Is that really the issue here, Chief? Department regulations? Need I remind you, Frank, you're the one that first raised this whole damned holiness issue vis-a-vis -vis our dear departed Lou Hogan. Now the chickens come home to Hill Street, and it seems that you're not prepared to live by it. I'm precisely prepared to live by it. I'm the only precinct captain in the entire city who has followed up on all the charges that Hogan sprayed at your roast. I took the badges of Coley and Lyle less than two hours ago, and I'm prepared to take more of them if it comes to that. And just as I expected Lou Hogan to be responsible for his men, I take full responsibility for Henry Goldblum right now. Meaning what? Meaning I won't use him as a scapegoat. Meaning if you take his badge and gun, you'll find mine in the same envelope. You're replaceable, Frank. Don't imagine you're not. I've got Ron Thompson and Joe Butler wasting away in internal affairs. I'm sure either would find it most congenial up on the hill. But if I go down on account of Goldblum, I take Arnie Detweiler with me. You what? Makes an interesting story, don't you think? City councilman six times arrested for drunk driving released yesterday at the express command of the chief of police because said councilman holds the department's purse strings. Oh, be careful, my friend. You're treading on thin ice. That's the deal. Goldblum for Deppweiler. I put up with a lot of crap from you, Furillo, that I don't tolerate from my other captains because I respect your idealism. But you're playing politics now. And if I were you, my friend, I'd be damn sure I knew what I was doing. If I weren't, I wouldn't be here right now. Okay, Frank. But I want to tell you something. You're forcing me to eat something here that I don't like. And believe me, you're going to pick up the tab on it. One other thing. If you ever want to play poker with me again, you better be damn sure you have another army dead while they're in the hold. Because I promise you, your badge ain't gonna be enough. Detailing, Frank. <laughs> With proper detailing, a good pair of regulation in the U.S. Naval lasts will outlast you. You see here, where the upper is stitched to the sole, you got to get polish in there. Leather rot sets in, and before you can say Ho Chi Minh, you got a malignant growth that is spreading insidiously through the whole shoe. How are you feeling, Howard? Uh, now, look at this. You can't let residues of polish accumulate around these eyelets. It'll eat right through that brass as quick as a carcinogen and through a white mouse. If it comes to that, Frank, promise me a Spartan cortege where your old chum taps at sunset, a lone volley from an M16, and uh, a simple limestone slab. Hard stop it. <laughs> <laughs> she could stop a uh, Plymouth at 90 yards, Frank. Find her a good home. Hard, please. 
Excuse me. Lieutenant, could I uh, speak to you in private, please? Uh, Frank, I may need a backup on this call. I expect you to be entirely frank with me, Doctor. How much time have I got? All things being equal, I'd say 30, 40 years. Just got the biopsy report back from the lab. The tumor was benign. You've got a clean bill of health. I'll check in with you tomorrow to okay your release. Captain? Howard? In case you didn't hear, you're going to be out of here in another day. You ought to be jumping out of your bed sheets. Maybe so, Frank. Oh, call darn it, Frank. When they wheeled me down here this morning, and I wasn't sure whether this was going to be my final battle, I... It all came to me like a breath of brown wind. My life is an unfired shot. No wife, no children. No one to give my love to. Here I lie, 45 years old, with money in the bank, education, professional repute. Yet I am bereft of all the most important things in life. Oh, I yearn to wake in the morning to the sound of little eaters on the steps. Time for dinner, Lieutenant. Oh, could you help oh. take those things? Thank you. Mm. By the way, you know, about parenting, it's the mother's age, not the father's age to be concerned about. Because many men remain virile way up into their 80s. Oh, really? And if you've been alone in your life up until now, you mustn't blame yourself. Because people just have different cycles for when they're able to do certain things in their lives. A nurse? Wolfowitz. I'm on till midnight. So if you need me, just whistle. Those are the nicest words I've heard from a partisan of the female gender in 16 years. Wolf of Woods? Mm-hmm. Washington, we've got a Miss Fowler on line six. Yeah, Leo. You mind, did he? Huh? Oh, sure. Right. Well, just take it easy. Hello, Miss Fowler. I appreciate all the time you've given me to think over the offer, and, well, uh, I want the job. Yes. Well, there's one thing we need to talk about before I can actually take it. I'd like to bring along my partner as part of the staff. John LaRue. You talk with him. Yeah, I know he's had a few problems in the past, but I can vouch for him now. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Fowler, but the job really isn't that important to me without him. To be honest, we're pretty much of a team. Yes, I'm afraid it does. No, I don't think there's a chance I'll change my mind. I'm sure you'll find a good man for the job. Thanks for considering me. Bye. Now, why not? Because I won't compromise a major operation out of this precinct just to satisfy an actor's artistic itch. We 
we bent over backwards for three days to accommodate you. This is where it stops. You're not going out. Look, I said I'll absolve the police department of all responsibility. I'll sign any kind of release you want. Decision. You're right, Captain. I apologize. Thank you, Captain. You make us Henry to step in here, would you? Yes, sir. Where have you been? To Josh, the movies. Dropped him off at his mom's. He's driving around afterward. Trying to find another movie to go to. It was a fender bender. Guys had the tire irons out. So I move in to break it up. Reach my pocket. No badge. No gun. Felt naked. I don't like early retirement, Frank. I guess I want to fight this thing. I ain't a fight. The girl made a statement withdrawing all charges. What about my jacket? Didn't I violate a thousand department Nothing regulations? Nothing's going into your jacket, Henry. Why not? Just let it go. I can't. Henry. What'd I cost you? What's the difference? The difference is protecting me instead of believing in me. How am I supposed to do that when we both know you screwed up? No, I won't own that one, Frank. I did what I thought was right. Henry, a lot of people have soiled themselves, cloaked in what they thought was right. I did what I thought was right in the Hogan case. Hogan is dead. I didn't stand up for what I thought was right with Arnie Detweiler, and the result is I had something to trade for your badge. Now, explain to me what notion of right survives all that. I don't know the answer to that, Frank. I just don't know. Maybe a civilian can get away with playing daddy to a 15-year-old hooker at 2 o'clock in the morning, but not a cop. And the fact that you didn't have sex with her is no excuse for a lousy judgment call. What do you want me to say? I was wrong? Yes. All right, I was wrong. Maybe I did make a mistake. But I am what I am, Frank, and I can't promise you I'm not going to make the same kind of mistake again. And I can't promise you I'll be there next time to cover your losses. But in the meantime, Henry... to see if I could find you. I said you might be here. I felt bad about this afternoon. You're a nice guy. I thought maybe I could buy you dinner. I have had enough extravagant celebrations today. Thank you very much. Well, how about a slow walk around the block? Look, lady, I'm a big boy. And I gotta tell you something. I don't need any sympathy 
from someone such as yourself. You caught me on a bad day, that's all. You know, it could have been real good. It could have been the best thing that ever happened to you. I'm talking about sincere human affection. I'm not incapable of that, Andy. You know, it might come as a surprise to you, but even a whore has a personal life. I was hoping maybe you'd want to be part of mine. Cheryl. Uh, you like uh, baseball? Not especially. Hot dogs, beer. I got these two tickets to a game tonight. I'd love to. If we're lucky, maybe the rain will hold up. If we're lucky, or maybe it won't. Uh, getting the good news. No. Post-operative dreaming is very common. It's the anesthetic on top of the tension. Would you like to talk about it? Sometimes it helps. Well, I was back on the hill 317. That's in Vietnam. It was night. A flare had gone up. And I was standing in the light. Fully exposed, as it were. Scared to death. You're a very special man, Lieutenant. To take on society's most thankless task. Me? Can, they Can get I get you anything? Rain? Oh. Hmm. Well. I guess I better get back to the desk. Nurse Wolfowitz, you touch me to the core. I'm sorry if I'm being forward, but I found it impossible to keep from thinking about you since you first walked into this room. And each time I see you, I experience a sensation of inner awakening that is too profound for words. Oh. Howard. I realize that sick male patients frequently develop an emotional fixation for their nurse. But this feeling is... You called me Howard. Call me Linda Howard. And yes, I've heard every story there is. But a woman... A woman must never rule out the time and place when her man may appear. <laughs> I, I have something to confess. I was watching you sleep from the door. I feel something, too. Do you think... Do you <clears throat> think that a woman uh, like yourself might like to get to know an old warrior better?
this one. Say, bro. What do you say? Where's your mean maiden aunt? She got a headache. Let's do it. You do it, shorty. Lie down. What the hell is this? A rip off? No, stupid. It's the Democratic Convention. Oh! Where's your friend at, cracker? I'm by myself. Then keep us company. Going to our car. Wouldn't want anybody to try and stop us. Oh! Feel nothing. Ah, uh -huh, you're gonna be okay. Hey, Nick, I think I'm dying. To you. Uh, cut that out. It's uh, Hobbs. I'm sorry. I want to see the damn thing go down. I forgot to tell you. Yeah. Just take it easy, kid. Holy... I'm right here with you. Some scene. This ain't a movie, you hairbag. Thank you. 